Hello, we're going to go ahead and jump into part three. Again, I did part three earlier, so if you watched it, I apologize, the sound was messed up, but here we go again. So part three, uh, we're talking about hearing with sensation and perception. So to start off with, we have sound travels in uh, the form of um, longitudinal waves, so the waves go back and forth. There's little molecules, and they, we usually hear sound through the air, right? It's little molecules in the air, and so if a sound wave from my voice, right, so it comes from this way, it's going to hit this molecule, and this molecule is going to start wiggling back and forth, which is then going to hit this molecule, and this molecule, and this molecule. Um, so based off of how much those things wiggle, which, um, based on how much of those wiggle back and forth, like this, it's going to tell me my frequency. So frequency is how often the wave occurs over a given period of time. So the faster that I... That, that, that sound wave's coming in, the more it's gonna, it's gonna be, more frequently it's gonna hit. So it's like when you take a sheet and you go whoosh, and it ripples like that, those ripples are like the frequency, how, if you put a, a finish line there and you watch how many ripples went by every second, that would be your frequency, how often does it occur? The pitch is a tone's highness or lowness and it's based off this frequency. So a pitch um, is, is based off of how frequently that sound occurs. It's not how loud it is, it's how frequent the uh, sound wave comes by. So if you have a wave that looks like this, or a wave that looks like this, right? They're, they both have the same about the same height, right? But this one's gonna be more frequent. This one's gonna have a higher frequency. It's gonna be higher. This one's gonna have a lower frequency because uh, it comes by less often, all right? so. We're looking at the frequencies and the pitch, whether it's high or low, that that tells us high is going to be this right here, low is going to be this right here. So that will tell us about the pitch and frequency. Loudness is just how tall that wave would be. So this would be very loud, would be like a loud sound, and this would be a lower sound um, as far as like loudness on your ear. Okay, so how does sound get in there to your ear? So first of all, it starts, you know, in the outer ear. The outer ear is this outside part of your ear. We don't really need to know that much about that. But it goes, and it goes into your ear. So right, it's shaking these air molecules around all the way into your ear, right? And it, it shakes, it starts off right here at the, at the eardrum. So the eardrum takes those vibrations, and it takes those vibrations, and it sends those, those it starts vibrating, and it sends those messages continuing through the middle ear. And the middle ear, parts of there's these three little bones, the anvil, the stirrup, and whatnot that are in the middle ear, and those things continue to vibrate before it finally sends it down to the um, circu uh, to the cochlea, right? And this is a picture of the cochlea right here. Now the cochlea is cool; it's this snail-shaped um, structure in your ear, and it's filled with fluid. And this fluid vibrates kind of like uh, if you dropped a something in, a, in water vibrates like that. So your cochlea, based on those vibrations of that fluid, will then vibrate these little tiny hairs um, over here. And these little tiny hairs, based on their vibrations, send the message through your auditory nerve to your auditory cortex, which remembers in your temporal lobe right above your ears. Okay? So those nerves, uh, those little hairs, send the message to the, to the nerves that way, okay? And that, that happens in your basilar membrane, in your basilar membrane. That's where the little hairs are, okay? So the fluid causes the hairs in the basilar membrane to, to shake, and then that shaking sends a message through your nerve fibers, down through your auditory nerve. Remember auditory nerve, again, nerves are just a bun bundle of neuron axons and that sends it to your auditory cortex. But first, where does it stop? It stops off your thalamus, right? Every All your senses stop off your thalamus first, except for your olfaction, your smell. All right, so looking a little bit more about uh, the cochlea, because the cochlea is kind of the, the key player here in sound, right? Um, the cochlea, that snail thing, there's two ways of, of uh, theories of how we distinguish sound, and one's called place theory, and the other one's called frequency theory. Place theory is kind of simple. It sounds just like it is. It says that depending on what place on the cochlea is activated or starts vibrating will will be will send a, a different neural message back to your brain depending on where it's at. So if it's here, it's going to send a different neural message than if it's here, than if it's here. Um, 
This works with very high uh, frequency things, but it doesn't work with very low frequency. So um, they actually found this out by they were cutting a, a rodent's cochlea open. I think it was a hamster. And they cut it open and they were watching it uh, and, they, and they saw this happen. And then they looked at human cadavers and they, they came up with this idea. But place three only worked with higher frequencies. It didn't explain how we hear low frequencies because the low frequencies are less, uh, are more subtle. So they don't create quite the ripple in the water or the fluid rather than the hairs wiggling and whatnot. So it's a, it's a little bit more subtle. So place theory did helped out with high frequencies but not low. And so it says, so place theory is pretty good at predicting, you know, based on what frequency is coming in on the higher range, it'll activate a different part of this cochlea. So we couldn't answer everything uh, with that. So we have to say, well, how, what about these low frequencies? Uh, low theories? Well, frequency theory says everything in this cochlea is vibrating at the same time. And based on how many vibrations and how much vibrations there are, those that that, that amount of vibration sends the information down and, and your brain interprets it that way. And so it's probably a combination of both. Right? Place theory deals with can, helps explain the high frequencies. Frequency theory helps explain the low frequencies, and then it's probably a combination of the two for somewhere in the middle. Right? It's probably a combination combo of these two theories. Um, place theory is actually um, remember the last guy from the last unit, um, Young Helmholtz? Helmholtz? That guy is actually the guy who came up with place theory in your ear, so he was all about sensation. Um, the, the problem with, one of the problems with place theory, just right before I move on, is that, um, or I'm sorry, problems with frequency theory, is that an individual neuron can only fire about a thousand times per second which for higher frequencies doesn't really work, right? Because you can only do a thousand times per second. That's basically the upper third of a piano, like ding, 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 ding. Those are high frequencies, a thousand times per second. So basically how you get around that is that some neurons are firing at some times and other neurons are firing at other times. And if you, if they all kind of play in coordination with each other, so you might have like a group of five working together and okay, you go now, you go now, you go now, you go now, and you uh, each take turns resting you can get like 5,000 per second and you can get a lot more per second. Um, now how do you lose hearing? There's two types of hearing loss. One's conduction hearing loss and this is where you just simply got a problem with the with your tools. Your problem with your eardrum, you have a problem with the little bones in your middle ear, you have a problem with something something physical is the wrong. So conduction. Conduction is the type of uh, sound travel that's happening energy transfer is happening through a process called conduction um, and so there's something not conducting not making those vibrations happen so those vibrations aren't happening at all and that's the problem or they're not happening correctly and that's the problem so conduction is a problem with the actual tools that you have um, sensory neural is a problem with the, the the stuff's vibrating but those those vibrations aren't sending the proper message so your cochlea may be the fluids may be vibrating, the hairs may be vibrating, but those hairs are then are not sending a, the message to your auditory cortex, through your thalamus. They're just, it's stopping there. And we can do something about this. We could do something about sensory neural. Uh, in the last 20 years, there's these things called cochlear implants, right? Cochlear, right? That's the key. The cochlear implants, actually what they do is they kind of do the cochlea's job for it. And so they receive those vibrations just like the cochlea does. And these, uh, the, the implants interpret those vibrations and send that message to your thalamus, to your auditory cortex, and then you're able to hear. And it's kind of a crazy, uh, awesome thing of how this has changed people's lives by uh, in installing these on people's, uh, their ear and their cochlea. It's, it's just awesome. It's kind of completely revolutionized their lives. Um, sometimes central neural hearing loss is sometimes called nerve deafness because your nerves aren't firing the way they're supposed to be. But um, yeah, so there you go for hearing.